We cannot stop time, but can we enjoy every single passing moment? I've started this kind of a life plan two years ago, um, where just like a business plan, as opposed to a business plan, if we would have, if we would plan our lives, and the currency is not money, it's moments. Happy moments are plus, unhappy ones are in the minus. Now, what would we wish? My decision was, okay, if it's my choice, then I want happy moments. I only want happy moments. Now, two years ago I started that and I am telling you, it is, the result is beautiful. I didn't manage the credit of 100% happy moments yet, but it's going up and I'm little by little increasing my capacities to, to think this way. So, time is my profession, it's my passion, and it's my obsession. Ever since I remember, I was visualizing time, sketches, drawings, sculptures. But then it was abstract. One day, time looked me in the eyes. And that was when I was passing in front of the mirror and I realized gravity pulls. I mean, there are solutions. You heard about plastic surgeons and everything and, and vanity and all of that. But I thought to myself, well, there must be a solution. Well, then, okay. Well, since I am the one, the artist who visualizes time, so I took this story of a candle wrapped around it, the two characters of uh, the flame, as in time, and youth, as this beautiful sculpture. I integrated in this beautiful sculpture sculpture that would be consumed, things like birth, change, transformation, and even death. So I thought to myself, okay, the story goes like this. The flame time was having a conversation with youth, and she, youth goes, I want to stay forever young and beautiful. Please do not consume me. Time tells her, look, all of, it, all of your life experiences are transformed into light. Your light then shines to those around you with warmth and light, shine. <coughs> unless you burn, unless you're consumed, your life will have no sense. There is a great pleasure in this transient, in this ephemeral. So, if you stay cold and still, you will never experience all of that. <laughs> okay. After a moment of contemplation, youth stretched its wick to the time, the flame, and she said, please, enlighten me. <laughs> well, I must have hit a chord here because somehow people were interested in this art of mine and then it was a moment of a change of my career. So I was the artist who had time, who enjoyed time. I became the businesswoman and the artist. And then I had to build this business. I found myself saying, I have no time. I have no time. My motto was, we cannot stop time, but I could enjoy every single passing moment. And here I am, I didn't have time for my children, for nothing. Until time looked at me in the eye again. And this time it wasn't the mirror, it was my son. One morning we woke up and he was saying to me, mommy, mommy, I cannot say vaum. I'm not looking at him and going, honey, but you're saying Baum. He actually was trying to say Baum. Two minutes later, he comes to me, mommy, when I'm brushing my teeth, the water is running from my mouth. That's when I went, shoo. My son was half paralyzed. His eye was drooling, his mouth was like that. We were in the hospital. The doctors told us that he has meningitis. It's a kind of an infection of the membrane that covers the brain and the spinal cord. And his possibilities are, from the worst case, two weeks he dies, 
reco full recovery, paralysis in between, and whatever. I was afraid. I was so afraid. I was feeling sorry for myself. And then it was the look in my son's eyes that told me, I'm going to enjoy those moments, even if I'll take the worst case scenario. Even if it was two weeks, then I'm going to enjoy them. Suddenly, I had time. I stopped work for two, two weeks. And the thing is, everything around us was a source of pleasure and joy. The hospital grounds, the fountains, we, we took our shoes and worked in, in the murky w water of the fountains. We invented games in the, in the hospital, in the hospital rooms with those sick children. We danced, we sang. It was beautiful, really beautiful. I got to know my son, he got to know me. We told stories, we shared them. Even the nurses and doctors sometimes took part in our activities. When we were leaving the hospital, later on he recovered. They found that it was a, a bacterial infection. They administered the, the antibiotics and my son started, uh, started gradually getting better. As we were leaving, one of the nurses t told me, we were curious, me and the nurses, what is your profession? I go, why? And she says, well, usually we're used to mothers who are nervous and standing in front of the room, grabbing us, and what are the next results and what's going to happen, and when are the doctors coming? And, but in your case, not only you were not interested in us, but you were a source of entertainment <laughs> for everybody in the hospital. And uh, so I turned around to her, and I know I was vague, but I said to her, time. My profession is time. <laughs> I pulled my present to her and to the nurses, one of my art pieces. And inside it is the story. And I thought to myself, leaving, she's going to understand because it looks like gravity is having her pull on her as well. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most important thing? What is the most, no, important, yes, sowieso, like the Germans say, but the most realistic thing that we have that is uh, we have in our hands. It's the moment. It is the present moment. And it is the moment that we can change. The past is gone and the future is not in our hands. So could we change those moments? And as I told you, since two years I'm working on my credit for happy moments. My life plan is looking good. What does it require then to change a moment? What is it that always upsets us? Uh, fear. Um, the understanding to other human beings, blames, mistakes. For me then, things like that started disappearing gradually because I started retranslating those moments and finding, and even if I didn't find a solution at that moment, I always found something within the present moment that gave me happiness. And then the problems solved themselves uh, eventually. Two things started happening. I started, um, A, time started unfolding. It really did. Things that I used to do with two, three, four hours, two days, I managed to do much faster because I'm so settled within me. I am much clearer. And on top of that, world started opening to me. Many worlds, worlds I did not expect they were there. It's just because of this letting go. Just recently, I was put under this challenge again. Well, it's very simple. I was invited to a birthday party. I had to do all of those other uh, things, and the birthday party starts at 10. At 10 o'clock, I was in the underground station. So thinking, you know, when is the train coming? And I thought to myself, okay, look what you're doing, so enjoy the moment. So I looked around me and I started enjoying the moment. And here came, <laughs> there came this gray-haired man. And he was running around, completely nervous. Can you give me 20 euro? Asking this woman. And this woman goes, 
Where do you think you are? Are you in front of the opera? We are in an underground station. The next man looked at him, he goes, I mean, your request, if you would have asked me to, for one euro, I can understand, but 20 euro, and everybody started having a momentum, laughing at this man. The third lady, she goes, what do you want 20 euros for anyway? The man goes, I want to take a taxi. And they <laughs> She goes, well, why don't you take the train like any one of us? He came to me and he goes, I have to take a taxi. Can you give me those 20 euros? I said, well, why do you want to take a taxi? He says, I'm not feeling well. I, I need to go home. I said, 20 euros is a lot of money, but I could give you time. He looked at me like, you know, what's she talking about? He left me. The train came. He didn't get his 20 euros, nor could he then take a taxi. But I sat next to him in the train, and I offered again my help. Can I help you? And he goes, yeah, you could get me 20 euros. I'll take the next station out and take a taxi. I said, well, uh, I could accompany you to your home if you are not feeling well. He looked at me, and he, I don't know, maybe he felt the sympathy. This elderly, I mean, elder man put his head in his hands and started crying. It turned out to be that he is from a mentally disabled people's home, and they are, their deadline, they have to come back. It was their day off. He was ha supposed to be there at 10 o'clock. And Evelyn, the caretaker, is going to give him a house arrest tomorrow if he doesn't get back. So he was like looking at his clock. It was 10, watch 10 o'clock already. So I said, I have a suggestion. Let's call Evelyn, which we did. We called Evelyn, and Evelyn was um, very sympathetic. She said he's got a hard pacer, pacemaker in his heart, and he definitely, he, Dieter, his name was, he should not be late. And I said to her, look, I am accompanying him. And so she was assured. Now, Dieter, having heard that, this man changed. He suddenly was the most wonderful creature I have ever met. He was telling me stories. I was entertained. I mean, Forget about theater, forget about... The man was even singing. He was really... He was chatting everybody in the underground. Of course, the journey took an hour and a half. So after the underground, we had to take a bus. I don't know how he was going to manage with 20 euro taxi. This is a 40 euro journey, but anyway. We arrived there. I handed him to Evelyn, and then I managed my birthday party and I managed to have fun with my people and time unfolded. <clears throat> what I want to say is that happiness is all around us. It is those moments that are with the people that are sharing it with us. It just requires a little bit of respect, love and some imagination. In those futures that are coming on us, with all of the varieties we have seen, so many varieties and differences and innovations, mind-boggling, how are we going to use those f mobile phones? How are we going to deal with the environment? I mean, I mean, we need a little bit of flexibility. Does it require from us then this little bit of a training of dealing with those moments and changing them? The, flex, the capacity of creative thinking in just turning a moment into a happy, happy one. And after all, the reward is immediate, happy moments. Thank you. <laughs>